Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Being able to master Photoshop is vital as a photographer. In this video, I'm going to try to show you your kind of first Photoshop manipulation, a really cool composite where we're going to change the background of this horse to get this final result. This is a two-part tutorial. The first part is going to be about the extraction. It's not such an easy extraction, but I wanted to do something that was kind of challenging, but I'm going to try to really make it as a beginner tutorial. And then in the second part, we'll add some rain, some clouds, and we'll make this final result. So let's get started. Here I am. So I'm going to give you two raw files, which you have to download to follow along. The link is below the video. Here is the two raw files I'm giving you. It's called Horse Composite 1 DNG and Horse Composite 2 DNG. Now, I'm using a Mac, but on the Windows Explorer, it's the same thing. When you double click on a raw file and you have Photoshop installed, usually it launches Camera Row, okay? So we have Camera Row, but what I want to do for now, I don't want to develop anything in the Camera Row itself. I want to open this as a smart object. What does that mean? That means that this is a raw file. A raw file needs to be developed. Right now, it's not developed. But if I click here and I click, I make sure that open in Photoshop as smart object is checked, what I can do is I can do whatever I want, like open the shadows or bring down the highlights or I can do whatever I want here. I can click here on open object. It's going to open the file in Photoshop, but it's still a raw file that's editable. And this is something you might have. That's why I wanted to show you this. Uh, embedded profile mismatch. Whatever profile Photoshop is using is different from your photo. What I advise you to do is click the option, use the embedded profile instead of the working space. Click OK. That's what I do. I use the profile that's in the photo. Okay, so now it's open, but you can see here we have a little logo and that means it's a smart object. So if I double click on the image, you see what the open shadows, the whites, everything that I did here uh, can be changed, meaning it's a non-destructive workflow. And that's what I want to teach you. I want to show you a workflow to create composites with your photos non-destructively as much as possible. We'll do the destruction just when we can at the end. For now, I'm just going to basically leave that as it is. I'm going to press OK and I'm going to open the background. OK, now if your Photoshop doesn't look like this, then make sure you just go here and choose the photography workspace. That's what I use. And you see my icons are pretty big there. It's a little trick. If you go here and you go into panel option, you can choose the size of uh, your layers. OK, I like them to be big. Layers is simply information that we can stack on the top of each other as we create our composite. So we need a second file for this. So I'm going to go back to my finder and double click on Horse Composite 2 DNG. Remember, you can download this. The link is below this video. Because I had this option already marked for the last photo, it's still active. So I'm just going to click Open Objects. So now I got two different objects open in Photoshop and I need Oh, let me use the same option, use the embedded profile, blah, blah, blah. Now I got these two files. I need to put them on the top of each other. Right now, there are two different tabs you see here. Photo number one and photo number two. Now, if you don't see that, that could happen because Photoshop has got so many workspace. Just click on photo, arrange, consolidate all to tabs. I love to work with tabs because you can just take one photo and another photo. So what do I want to do? I want to put the horse photo on the top of the background photo because I want to extract the horse and put it on this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take here the move tool, that little nice tool, the move tool. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click and drag the photo on this tab and I'm going to hold the shift key as before I let go. By holding the shift key, what's going to happen is that the photo is going to be centered exactly like the other one. And because I shot this right after the other. So I shot the horse and I turned around and I shot the background. It was pouring rain. I was under an umbrella, uh, but I just didn't like that background because, you know, two horse next to it. Uh, there's a bad warrior. I just, I thought this other background was going to be much nicer. The first thing we need to do is extract the horse, take him out. And so we can put it on the other composite. And there's a very specific reason why I layered this on top of this. And you will see in a second. But to start off, we're going to use the quick selection tool, which is W. Any tool in Photoshop you can make big or small by holding the control and option key and dragging with your left mouse. You see, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna zoom in. So I'm gonna take the zoom tool, which is Z as a shortcut. And I'm gonna zoom in on that horse. I wanna extract that horse. And then you can, I don't know if you can see here, but it was pouring rain. I'm gonna press W for the quick select mode and I'm just gonna paint on the horse. 
And you see by default, that tool has got a little plus sign on it. That means that wherever I paint, it's selecting the horse. And that's what we want to do. Right now, we're just selecting the horse. But you see here, as I did there, we can see the marching ants are over that. It means this was selected. So I'm going to hold on the Option key. And by doing that, the Quick Select tool now becomes a minus. And I can minus out what I'm doing here. So I, let's carry on. Let's, so by default, it's a plus, And if you hold on the Option key, you get a minus. Okay, as you get on the legs, you, I'm, I'm going to make my tool smaller. Same thing, I'm holding the Control and Option key, and I'm left-clicking and moving my mouse to do that. Okay, and I'm just going to go like this. I think I want to zoom in more. Z. So I always go Z, W, Z, W, Z. I can zoom in W. I, I'm back on the Quick Select tool. It's nice to know the shortcuts to be from one tool to the other. And as I said, this is going to be a very challenging extraction. I, on purpose, wanted to take something that was kind of hard because I wanted you to learn the right way. You see, I see a lot of people doing tutorials with very easy photos to extract and it's okay, but in the real world, often we have cases where we don't have easy photos to extract. There's, you know, hairs and there's so many things going on. But I'm still going to try to make it as a beginner tutorial. So you see here we have some hairs. I'm just going to click as, you know, as best as I can. So what I do first is I go through all my marching arts and holding the Alt key, I take out what I don't need without touching the Alt key. I'm adding what I, I want to be selected. And I go around, so you see here, I, I'm not pressing anything. I want this, but this is going to be a really hard part because check this out, it's green, and then it's, uh, you know, and then we have the here's there, so this part is going to be really tricky. One, one little trick I want to show you, see, uh, right now the software has a hard time selecting the difference between the here's and, and, the, and the rain here, but because it's a, uh, a smart object, I can double click on it, and I can maybe help the software. What I can do, let me zoom in here. I can zoom in on the, I'm going to press the end. I'm going to zoom in here on, on the here's. I want to add more contrast and more exposure, maybe to help Photoshop being able to differentiate the here's and the trees. So let's add some contrast. Let's add some exposure. And you can see, you can see the rain. It was pouring rain. I captured some of the rain and we're going to put it back in the software in Photoshop later on. And I'm going to add some clarity. Clarity might do the trick, and I'm going to press OK. Now, the photo looks not very nice because it's not a good retouching, but I'm only doing this temporarily because, remember, we are working in a non-destructive workflow to help the software make the selection. So I'm going to press W to go back on my Quick Select tool, and then now it should be a little easier for the software to select the here. So remember, when you're clicking outside, you're using the Alt key, and when you're clicking inside, you're not using any key, and it's doing the trick. Okay, now uh, I'm just going to do that. And um, you see here we have a, a lot of small hairs around and we're going to see if we can recover this. For now, I'm just doing like a basic job, making sure that most of it is, okay, here it's going to be tr really tricky. Now, I need that. I'm holding the Option key here to take that out. We have a lot of hairs here. This is going to be really tricky. So for now, when you have something so complex, we have a special tool that we use for that in Photoshop. So right now, don't worry about it. Just press the Alt key, you know, do the best selection that you can. But when it gets very complex like this, you won't be able to do it with that tool. We need another tool. So for now, my marching on is pretty much around everything, except when there is some hairs, like, um, yeah, like here, we are missing some hairs and stuff. Like that. So how do we correct that? Well, because we are using the Quick Select Mode tool, we can click here on Select and Mask. I can click here, and here we have different view modes. For the, so the view mode I want to use is on layers. On layers, let me zoom out. Come and Z zoom out. Here is the zoom. What it, what what on layer does? It just puts the horse on the layer. Because remember, we put the horse on top and the background at the bottom, and now we can see the, the, the background, which is really cool. You have different options. There's another one that I like a lot, it's called Overlay. The way Overlay works is that everything which is red is not selected, and we can see what is selected by no red. Uh, you can do it on black and white where you see your selection. I like to do on layers, because I can really see uh, what's gonna be an issue, what's not gonna be an issue. Okay, so now, oops, sorry, let me zoom in. We go back, holding the the space bar to move around. Space bar makes a hand and you can move around. And you can see here it's very jigged and it's not really nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to go here in edge detection, which is a really cool option. I'm going to call smart radius. And I'm going to put, I usually put two pixel. Two pixel is going to do is going to go all around my horse and try to fix the issues that it can pick up some of the small hairs, but it's, it's limited what it can do. Okay. I like to add a bit of smooth to my, uh, to my selection. So it's a little smooth and uh, I don't, I usually add a little bit of feather, but very little bit. Uh, it's all it does. It adds a little uh, feathering around the section. The problem with that is that sometimes it's going to leave an edge on your selection where you have the horse and you have like a little edge on it. It looks not very natural. I don't want that, but I'm seeing it in real time. I can see right away if there's an edge so far, it's pretty good, but we still have a lot of issue with the hair. So, there is a special brush here called the Refine Edge Brush Tool, which is here. If you click on it, like any brush, you can make big or small by com you know, using the Control and Alt key on your keyboard. And check this out. I'm going to brush here where there is hairs. And the software is going to try to pick up any hairs that's kind of missing or clean up anything. So I, I don't do it everywhere. I just do it where there is really like an issue. I know where, where there is hairs. And it takes a little bit of calculation. It adds also some other random things, but I will show you a cool way to correct that. So here, and make sure you don't do it everywhere. Just do it where there's a bit of hairs. Like it did pick up quite some hairs. I like what it did. It took a little too much, but that's fine. Here we have a little bit of an issue here also in this section here. So I'm just doing it here. So it, often it adds a lot, like he, here it really didn't do a good job. So I'll show you how to correct that, that's fine. For now, we leave it as such. There's different ways to correct that. There's one way I really like that I'm gonna show you. For now, I'm just painting and make sure you really only paint where there's a lot of hairs. I'm not gonna worry about so much here. Here, I'm gonna worry a little bit here in this section because uh, you see, it did a great job here. It picked up all the hairs and I'm gonna cut the feet of the horse anyway. He's not gonna be, we're not gonna see the bottom. I wanted to make, to make this a little easy for you so we don't have to do shadows and things like this. Okay. That's pretty good. We still have a lot to correct, but I, that's already pretty good. And we have to correct things here. And I could do it with other tools here, but I have got a better workflow I want to show you. And by the way, guys, if you know other ways to do some extractions or other plugins, you use that for that, you can share that in the comments on this section. And take a second if you can like this video, really makes a difference for me because other people can see it. More you like it, more, more people can see it. More you share it, more you comment it. It helps the YouTube algorithm to really get other people through it. So it's a great exchange that you can give me in exchange that I do two videos for free for you every week. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, so now how do we correct? We got a, a selection, but we know it's not great. So because I click, uh, one thing I didn't show you, let me go back, very important. When you go here on the output settings, what I do is I like to leave it on the default, which is selection, meaning the result of that is just gonna be selection, which is the marching on. So we got marching ons all over. Now, if I click here on this tool, which is the add layer mask, it created the mask. So now we got a mask here. And remember, let me, I'm gonna press Alt and click on the mask so you can see how it works. White reveals, black conceals. So everything which is white on the mask is gonna reveal the horse. Anything which is black is gonna hide the horse, okay? But we can see we have some imperfection here on the mask. And one way I like to correct that, so I'm gonna press the Option key again on the mask to go back to normal mode is I like to zoom in first at least 300%. See here it says 300%. Then I take a brush. That brush, I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna make sure the harness is at 85%. 85% is very important because 85%, uh, if the harness was 100%, it would be like just, uh, you know, a very definite brush. You would see every brush stroke. 85%, we still have a bit of feathering but not much, only 15%. And the size is pretty good, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, I wanna make sure that white is my foreign color and that my opacity is 100 pixel. Okay, and then when I brush, because I'm brushing on a mask, what's gonna happen? You see, as I brush, I'm bringing back uh, basically the hairs, but I'm also bringing back uh, the grass, okay? But if I press X, I can click one time, hold down the shift key, and just follow along the hairs there. I'm losing some of the hairs. I won't be able to get all the small hairs, but I don't want to lose some of the hairs. And if you don't press the space bar, you can just go around and, uh, you know, and just correct it. Command Z if you, you did something you don't like. 
And I'm just going to clean up the edges here a little bit. But I want to leave some of uh, the hairs that the software picked up. I just don't want to leave some of the green. All right, so I continue cleaning this up. So uh, here, maybe I clean that up a little bit here. And, uh, and I'm really zooming in a lot. So, you know, I don't think anybody is going to notice that anyway. And what you can do also is sometimes you can lower the opacity and, uh, and even lower the harness if you want and just brush a little bit by lowering the opacity in the harness. Let me lower even more the opacity and uh, make it softer. You can sort of like blend this a little bit better. Like, uh, you know, I want to leave some of the hairs here, you know, this kind of thing. And you just let me make it a bit bigger. And this is really tricky, but yeah, that, that looks kind of weird at 300%. At but when you look at it like this in small, you, you know, it's going to look really right. Here we really have an issue, so B for the brush. And so when we have an issue like this, I'm going to put this back at, at, at 100%, back at 85. So opacity 100%, harness in the 85%. And here I'm just going to press, sorry, press X. So if you press, if, if you do something by mistake, and you will do it because I do it all the time, you just press X and you go back to white, white reveals, and black conceals. So I'm just going to paint around here. Okay, so I see what I'm doing. And you see, I'm gonna press X and I'm gonna hold on, and that's a trick. You hold on the shift key and you just follow the head of the horse. And because you've got a 15 feathering, you are still getting a little bit of this hair sticking out. Yeah, something like that. And then let's clean that up. Okay, clean, the, oops. And remember, I'm at 300%. It's a big zoom in. And this is this was a really, really rough selection because, you know, uh, against darkness, it's really bad. Here, I think there's something missing, so I'm going to press X, make it smaller. I'm just going to paint in there. Yeah, you see, I'm missing some of the hairs. I'm just painting in there and bring it back some of the hair, but not too much, just a little bit, so... This will kind of act as hairs. Oh, I went too overboard there. Okay, and then hold. It, and just takes a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work to make it right. So again, I'm gonna lower the opacity. I'm gonna lower the harness. And I'm just gonna take black as a full round. Just wanna take that out a little bit. But the, the photo was not so uh, sharp to start with because the horse was moving. But that's fine. I'm look, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do a portrait. I don't really care if it's not super sharp. So I'm just going around. We have the barbed wire that we need to take care of and there's different things. Right now in this first video, I want to focus just on the extraction. And on the next video, I'm going to show you a lot of cool things uh, to make this really pop. I'm pretty happy with uh, how it's gone so far. Uh, you know, if you look at it from like this, you should be able to not see much. So now, okay, just to finish off part one, I'm going to press Command T and, um, oh, one thing I need to explain to you is that I want to make the horse much bigger. And I could, with a smart object, make it bigger. The problem is that I'm going to lose quality. And this is already two 42 million pixels file, so I can lose a bit of pixels. So what I'm going to do is on, on the bottom layer, I'm going to press Command T. Command T is the shortcut you need to remember if you use Photoshop. Command T is a free transform tool. You do everything with it. Basically, what it enables you to do, I'm going to make this much smaller uh, because I want to position the background, something like this. I really want a horse to be big, something like that. Oh, I'm, you see I'm missing a bit of the feet here. Yeah, I, I wanna cut that off, something like that. Yeah, I like that. And uh, all of this is unneeded pixels, so I can take the crop tool now, and I'm gonna crop the image so that we only use this part of the photo. Voila. Press enter, and we still have a lot of pixel. Let me zoom in here, press Z to zoom in. Uh, it's still, you could still make a great print. Look at this image, image size. We still have like, uh, let's put in two pixels. Uh, you know, almost 6,000 6, pixels wide, which is pretty good. So now the horse is kind of there. You can see before, after. We have some trees behind, which is kind of weird. It looks kind of weird there, but we'll take care of that in the next video. In part two, we'll, uh, let me see here. Oh no, I wanna make sure this is kinda of clean. I wanna move the horse a little bit down because we can see we, he's missing a leg or something. So you can just click on the layer and use the move tool and use the arrow on your keyboard 
and move the horse down a little bit, something like that. Voila. And I'm kind of happy with the extraction. We have a little bit of an edge here. Uh, so I want to take care of this. If you have an edge here, I'll show you a really cool trick. Okay, you go on the mask. Now check this out. You go on the mask, you take the lasso tool, you make a, a rough selection where there is an issue. We, you, because usually the, that's the problem with extraction is the edge is not going to be everywhere. It's going to be in some part of the horse. So I just took that edge here. But remember, I did a bit of feathering on, 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 the, uh, on the mask, okay? So my mask is not super, super sharp here. Let's see, I'm gonna press the Alt key to show you. I'm gonna zoom in. You see how my mask is a little bit blurry there? That's good. That's good for what? I'm gonna press the Alt key again because I'm gonna show you a really master trick. This, this trick I learned from uh, somebody who works for big brands, like does really high-end retouching with Photoshop and I thought it was amazing. So how to get rid of that little fringe there and nowhere else. So I made a selection with the lasso tool. I'm gonna to press a Command L, which is the level. So level is basically just sort of contrast. So for now, all you have to understand is I'm doing a level on the mask. But because I made a selection, I'm only doing it where I made the selection. And all you have to worry about is move that middle slider. Check this out, you see that fringe here? Now I'm gonna move this. You see, if I move this on the left, the fringe is becoming bigger. If, if I move on the right, it's disappearing. It's gone. It's completely gone. You can see the before, fringe, after, no fringe. Press OK. And Command D to undo section. You can go around where you think there is too much of a selection. Here is, you know, hmm. It's not perfect, but uh, you're better off having a bit of feathering there then to it it looks like it's like some blur because it was anyway you know the horse was a little bit moving there's a bit of motion blur so it looks like motion blur it's not going to look like uh, at the end when we're done i don't think people is going to think it's going to be a composite i want to make this as much natural but i still want to make the kind of fine art so okay now i'm kind of happy with the selection i think it's good enough uh i, I could spend more time on it but i didn't want this tutorial to be two hours you get the idea overall it looks great in part two we're going to make this into like that. But for now, I just want to show you, I came up with my best course ever, the Final Art Masterclass. Here's a little trailer in case you didn't see it yet. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm really happy to announce you that I have a new course coming out called the Final Art Masterclass course. This is seven years in the making, actually even more if you take into account when I shot the photos. But basically the idea of this course is I'm going to show you all the best photos of the six coffee table books that I've published over the last seven years. We are going to start with the Paris book, black and white. I'm gonna show you some of my best shots, like this Arc de Triomphe photo that I retouched with Aurora HDR and Lightroom. This crazy panorama of the Eiffel Tower that is my most sold panorama of the Eiffel Tower in galleries. Then we're gonna do the New York book. On the New York book, I'm gonna show you so many projects. This beautiful black and white of Brooklyn, a metro station in black and white. I'm gonna show you the back cover of the book with this photo of Brooklyn. And I'm gonna show you sky replacement with black and white of this foggy photo of the Manhattan Bridge. Then we're gonna to go to the Venice book. And on the Venice book, I'm gonna show you so many projects from carnival shots to extreme long exposures to some of my most iconic photos of Venice before and afters, including Verteramas, including long exposure with filters, everything, so many projects in Venice. Then we're gonna to go to the Los Angeles color book where I'm gonna show you lots of projects. Beverly Hills, colorful. I'm gonna show you how I did the cover of my book, which is not only the cover of my book, but it's also the cover of the State of California magazine. I'm gonna show you some projects from Venice Beach, some panoramas in downtown, some photos for the Malibu State Park. In all, you've got over 25 different projects. Then we're gonna to go to New York, and I'm gonna show you how I made the cover of my new New York book. Many projects, Central Park at fall, uh, I'm gonna show you this amazing photo of Central Park, how to shoot at night, how to create really interesting vertoramas in the city. Last but not least, we're gonna do my Paris book where I'm gonna show you some crazy projects, including the cover, which was a very hard project, including my most famous HDR photo of the Eiffel Tower, including crazy HDR panoramas with different kind of colors, and last but not least, day to night kind of photography. 
I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in this course, including a business class on how to get a better exposure in the media, how to get published in magazines, how to get book deals, and how to get into galleries. So if you want to take your photography to the next level, if there's only one course you want to buy from me, that is a finite masterclass course. Not knowing how to shoot and knowing Lightroom and Photoshop can really make or break your career. I really want to help you to get to the next level. This is a perfect course for you. I'm sure you're going to love it. It's going to take your photography to the next level.